hello! So I'm doing a video today on how to find the right piercer, the right shop, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yes, I know I look like the chick from Deadpool, that little angsty teenager. <laughs> Basically, this video is going to be on tips, red flags, um, little things to look out for whenever you go to a piercing shop. And a giant disclaimer, I say this in like every piercing video I have ever made, I am still a student and I'll always be a student. There's always something new to learn about piercing. And this video might be out of date in a couple of years because people that really study piercing and are into it and passionate about it will continue to update their techniques and how they do things. So this video could be out of date in a couple of years, uh, but for right now, this is what I look for in piercing shops. I just want to say that this video is an educational video. I know a lot of people get sensitive whenever I talk about this because maybe it's not the way that they do things or they don't want to change things or maybe they don't have enough money to do these things. Um, which the bottom line of this is that it is not a video attacking anyone. I am not attacking anyone. Um, I'm just... I'm really passionate about this and I don't want people saying that they had a bad experience with piercings anymore. I just want to help people. Um, and some of the things that I'm saying are going to be my opinion and uh, optional. Uh, I'm a little bit more picky with who I go to to get pierced uh, because I don't want my body fucked up. And being in a shop for a while, I've seen plenty of things that can fuck you up and this is mostly out of experience, basically. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people are saying that APPs... <laughs> it's so ridiculous, I can't... I'm just saying that it's elitist, which is... Blows my mind that people would even think that, that... I don't know, people just don't really think about what they put in their body. They think it's just like, oh, it's just a piercing. It's like a scab. It's not all like, it's, it's nothing like that. It's something in your body. And I always try to pressure that message when it comes to piercing, it's something going in your body and you should definitely care what goes into your body. Cause some of the things that I'm going to tell you, you can use these pieces for years and years and years. And they last so long versus a piece of plastic that'll last like this much time compared to that much time. And I'm gonna try to keep calm with this. I know I get really frustrated while talking about piercing stuff, so I have written down some things so I do not go off on a tangent. I'm going to try my hardest not to go off on a tangent. It's just very hard to talk about things that frustrate me, that I'm passionate about, and people just like can't click it in their head, but I don't know. It just, it, it still just blows my mind that people don't care too much about what they put in their body or what they tell people to put in their body, so. For this video, I've done four segments. The first one is going to be their work, what you see online, what you observe. Uh, their shop is going to be the second part, the piercer, and then how they do the whole dealio, the procedure, and everything on you. So I'm going to give you some red flags, some things I look out for, and some optional things that my <laughs> nitpicky standards will go towards. <laughs> First parts, their work. First thing you want to do is if they have an Instagram, you definitely want to check out their Instagram. How do they take pictures? What kind of jewelry are they tagging in their pictures? You know, are they keeping things updated? You know, are they posting often? A great thing about Instagram is sometimes they'll tag their clients in the photos or their clients will tag them in the photo. Go on to their page. Look at the piercing. You know, maybe they got pierced like five months ago, skip right ahead and see how the piercing is doing now. You could even ask them like, hey, how was your piercing here? What did you think? It's always great to do that. Also, there's Yelp reviews, but you can't always trust those. Some people aren't, they don't know like etiquette when it comes to piercing. So sometimes the Yelp reviews will be wrong or Facebook reviews, but sometimes it's good to look at those still. Cause what if they said, oh, well they said an inappropriate joke while well, I was getting my nipples pierced or you know, they said some really racist shit against me. <laughs> so you, maybe you want to keep your eye out for that as well. Um, you can always do that. Now, if this piercer has a shop Instagram, I would highly recommend going there. You want to check if they have all their updated paperwork. So uh, the health department, you know, they want to make sure everything's clean in there. They get random checks. They do like videos of everything to make sure that the shop is top notch. Um, maybe a piercer just got their certificate for being an APP piercer. Um, maybe they renewed it because they do have to renew these 
things you know he can't just like give up one year and just be like all right we got it once that's it fam you want to make sure that all of their paperwork is up to date some shops will post that shit on their shop websites or instagram uh and some shops won't sometimes you might have to go inside the shop look at the walls um, you could even ask them, but for their work, you're kind of just going online and like, you know, researching them, their clients, the photos that they take, the jewelry that they tag into the photo, like if they do anatomy metal, industrial strength, all those other amazing brands, then you'll probably be good and you know that you'll get great jewelry when you go there. But sometimes you have to tell them like, I want this jewelry. Sometimes they just have basic jewelry, but hopefully you get done with like an metal or something like that. next part of this video is going to be when you get inside the shop your first impressions of the shop does it smell is there anything on the floor is there jewelry on the floor you know are there people coughing and sneezing on the tables and they're not cleaning the jewelry cases is there someone putting their fucking dick jewelry on a baggie on the table and they don't clean it you need to make sure that you know if you see anything weird or gross that they're taking immediate action to clean those things and solve that problem. The next thing would be what they have in their jewelry case. Um, sometimes they'll have some like entrepreneur people that will make their own jewelry, but it's still very high quality. You know, maybe their best friend makes jewelry and it's just amazing. It's hand bent, it has like genuine like gems in it and it's absolutely beautiful. That's very rare to come by, uh, but some people do have that. Uh, some shops can actually make their own jewelry in that own house. Um, that's great. There's some hand bent jewelry out there as well, but usually you wanna look for really nice pieces. A red flag for me, a huge red flag. If I see those jewelry pieces with the little plastic balls on them that are like little disco lights or whatever, or you know, any kind of plastic, anything like that, I'm out. I am not in that shop. I'm not getting pierced. I'm not going to get touched by anything in that shop. That's a huge red flag for me. Another thing that you want to look for is what solutions that they have, cleaning solutions that they have out. Sometimes they have h 2 Ocean. Sometimes they have like a natural cleaning solution. Mostly what I see now is h 2 Ocean or a natural uh, cleaning solution. No one really uses antibacterial soap anymore because it can't really do what it needs to do for you or there will be like a lot of people that are allergic to it so you know natural is sometimes the best way to go but h2 ocean works as well i do love the sea salt soak solutions those are amazing uh it's basically the same as h2 ocean if you didn't know that and then uh the natural solutions i do like those i'm not gonna go too much into it i prefer not to do antibacterial anymore i realize that it only gets your piercing so far or like only so clean. Another thing is that you want to make sure that they have the correct equipment and that it's not out of date. Some autoclaves is what an all okay first off an autoclave is what they use to clean jewelry you know they'll put they'll like clean it back in the back room and then they'll put the jewelry in the autoclave and then it close it sometimes it takes like 30 minutes to up. Um, some of the older autoclaves will take longer. Um, I prefer the autoclaves that are just like the little thin ones that only take like a couple minutes and then boom the jewelry is right there. Usually they do that right before you get pierced. Um, I really really appreciate it when they put the needle, the jewelry, everything that they're going to be putting on your body and coming in contact with you inside that autoclave. Some places will not autoclave the needles that they pierce you with. So I want to keep that in mind. Now the next point and the last point of this section is going to be optional. This is what I look for personally. Um, there are very few shops that I will go to that are tattoo slash piercing. I prefer to only go to a shop that is only piercing. The only reason why is because sometimes if you have tattoo and piercing, um, the manager will choose to favor one of these and sometimes it'll go towards tattooing and in the piercing side they won't be getting the resources that they need to be doing uh safe piercing basically <laughs> um so i prefer most of the time just to go to a piercing shop but i only know two places so far that are tattooing and piercing that i can trust but that's about it that's totally optional by the way but that's just me being nitpicky i guess
The next section of this is going to be the piercer and this is a very big part. It's going to be a lot of body reading and how they talk about things. It's going to be a little bit hard to do this but it should be, it should be pretty simple. Now I'm going to give you something optional right off the bat because I think it does matter to me. Some people will just be like, all right, fuck it, they're an ass. Optional. If they are rude to you, if they make you uncomfortable, you know, if you ask a question like, oh, what's that horseshoe thing? And they'll be like, you mean I can't give a bad ring? I will tease some people like this, but not to the extent of some shops where they're just like, did you hear that, Jim? This fucking idiot called a horseshoe. <laughs> If they're gonna make the whole shop like laugh at you and poke at you, it's kind of ha has like those traditional shop feels, which I am not a fan of. I do not like traditional shops, the whole like seniority thing where they treat everyone in their shop like a piece of shit. Um, if they're new, you know, like, like literally it gets really intense. Some of those shop traditional things get, they're really intense. Um, I'm not a fan of those and I prefer not to support them. So up to you if you want to do that. Some people are just going to be like, whatever, I'm, I'm just here to get peers, like blowing them off. Some people will choose to do that. But for me personally, I just choose not to support those peeps, you know? But it's mostly how you talk to them. They shouldn't be mocking you in any way. Um, I'll like mock my friends and like tease them and stuff, but not to the extent where like, you know, you feel lesser about yourself or if they're constantly mocking you or teasing you or like why the fuck would you get that on your face they should not be doing that should they should be keeping it very professional they should be answering your questions straightforward if you want a detail for a certain question like oh how do you do this piercing i would like to know the process before it happens to me because i'm a little bit anxious they're not gonna just sit there and make fun of you they need to be like okay well i'm gonna do this this and it's gonna be completely on you when we do the piercing they're gonna make sure that your control of the situation and they can handle the piercing you know it's gonna be that just that balanced relationship it's not gonna be like the piercing's up here and you're all the way down here because you both need to meet your needs right there in the middle that's just personally what i think but i i respect that professionalism that comes from a piercer another optional thing that i really appreciate that some piercers do is that they'll say no to some piercings especially when it's the snake eyes piercing i see that shit blowing up right now it's the two little dots on the tip of your tongue, very, very bad piercing to do. Very bad, chips the teeth, you know, it's gonna cause a lot of problems. I very much appreciate it when a piercer will say no to a piercing. I will take that, I will ask them why, and then I'll drop it right there, <laughs> you know, because you never want to pressure a piercer to do a piercing that one they don't really trust or think is a good idea because there are some really stupid piercings out there that people should not get and it's great when piercers say no. Now one of the most basic things is that they should know what they're putting in your body right off the bat when you meet your piercer. You can ask them straightforward, what are you putting in my body? I already have a video on metals and the certain kind of metals that you should be putting in your body. Uh, <laughs> you know, none of that sterling silver stuff. Here's some examples of some of the things that they should be saying, some of the little codes. It matters what you get, either it's gold, titanium, all that stuff. I have a whole video about it. It's about the correct metals. Um, but if they don't know what they're putting in your body, like right off the bat, like if they can't just say the code right there, I would say that that is a red flag for me. It's kind of just like a nurse or a doctor coming up with you with a needle and they're about to like put the syringe in you and you're like, oh, what kind of painkiller is that? They're like, um, uh, um, uh, I don't fucking know, but it's all right, you know, in the state, just fucking whatever, and you know, that, <laughs> I would not trust that, and I hope you would not trust that either. Now, like I said earlier, the updated paperwork, sometimes when you go into their actual piercing room, they'll have their little certificates on the wall. You can probably see like an APP one, you can see bloodborne pathogens, maybe CPR, you know, you want a good wall just so they know like what the body and human anatomy is. You want to see those certifications and also you want to see one for the year that you're in. If it says 2017 and it's 2018, you better fucking ask. Like, bitch, what, have you not hung it up yet? What's going on? There's so many red flags. I would say that's a red flag for me too. 
aftercare practice. Now, when you talk to them about aftercare, they should be really knowing their shit. Um, say you have some allergies, if you have sensitive skin, they might have some different things for you to do, or they'll recommend like, oh, do the sea salt soap for this long or this long, or do these measurements or these measurements, or hey, maybe we have a natural solution for you if you have sensitive skin. They should be very educated on the solutions that they're recommending you to rub on your body and the piercing. They should also be telling you the healing times that they did not Maybe they do that at the end. Go ahead and ask them before you get pierced, maybe. Now, this is a very, very important note that I would love, la 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 love to drill into many people's heads. The amount of years that they have been piercing doesn't mean anything. The amount of years do not matter. It's more about what they have been practicing for those years, the education that they have received. If they have been practicing the state standards of basic piercing, let me just say that Claire's and Walmart are also a part of the state standards. So, even though they've been piercing for 30 years, they might be doing shit piercings for 30 years straight, but the state just doesn't give a fuck. You have to remember that the state doesn't really know too much about piercing and body modification still. So, Really, really think about that. When they start to bring up their years of, well, I don't need to be an APP piercer, I've been piercing for 20 years, that doesn't mean anything to me. I need to know that the education that they have been receiving for the past et cetera years, that it's good, that it's legit. I need legit piercings and body jewelry, you know? I don't have any time for tomfoolery. I totally forgot to say this for the piercer part, but basically um, I have been to an APP piercer before and they fucked me up. I had to take that shit out right away. You know, I sat down, I was really nervous. I was kind of like looking at Alex while they were doing it in their stuff. And then when I looked over, I was like, wait a minute. Did I even hear him wash his hands? Did I hear the jewelry or the tools that he's using on me? get cleaned or taken out of the package correctly? Or did I just see him put the tool onto the little tray and then approach me? Did he clean the area? I don't know why, but I just like sat there for a second and I was like, oh shit. And I like looked at Alex and I was like, oh fuck. Like some APP piercers aren't the best either. So you need to keep your eyes out for these things. I didn't it was a bad experience. I took everything out. I'm still trying to heal from that piercing experience. Oh my God. So definitely, it doesn't matter if they're APP, that you're just like, right, you're good to go right off the bat. You still need to look for these things. You still have to look for these things. <laughs> okay, now the last part. This part's gonna be a lot to absorb. There's gonna be a lot of things to look at um, and I know it's a little bit fast-paced because maybe you're nervous, you know, let the piercer know if you're nervous. Just like be like, I need a minute or just something like, it's totally okay to be honest with your piercer and tell them like, I'm really, I'm scared, I'm nervous. Like it's totally fine to be honest, be open to them. You know, they don't want to be like right there with the needle be like, okay, you ready, bitch? And then you just pass out like that is that is very bad <laughs> always be honest with your piercing anyway went off in a little tangent there the first thing you want to make sure is that it's a clean room do you see mops in the corner are there pieces of jewelry on the floor is there flesh or blood on the bench is there any fluids there on the bench because maybe they cleaned the station or maybe someone peed on the bench or sweated the fuck out of them or maybe you have some allergies maybe a cat or a dog person sat on that chair there's a million things make sure the room is clean they it should kind of look like a doctor's office which that takes me to one of the optional things I usually want the piercing room to look like a doctor office I don't want it to be like you know all fancy the noise fucking blaring I want to be able to like talk and hear my piercer I don't want it to be crazy and madness I want it to be professional I want it to be clean I don't want like a mess or clutter like that piercing room is just for piercing. You know, they can have some cute things on the wall that shows like their personality, but there shouldn't be, you know, a million things cluttering up the room, making it like all tight and, you know, nothing like that. It should be nice, clean. It shouldn't be like dusty or, you know, it shouldn't be dirty. 
Another thing you want to look out for is when they talk to you about placement and the future of your piercing. You know, a common mistake um, is when people get a nostril piercing and they're like, oh, but in the future I can change it, change it to a ring and you're just assuming that the piercer knows that. You need to have that communication or maybe they'll communicate with you that, hey, do you plan on changing this to a stud or a ring or whatever you want to do? Like, what are you planning to do? What do you want the placement? What is your future goals with jewelry? What are you thinking of? Do you plan on like stacking at some point? Any of that. Very, very important to talk about the future of your piercing, but if they do come to you with that first, that's fantastic, but they should always, always show you the placement before piercing you. They shouldn't put a dot on you and then just pierce you. They should show you everything they need. They need your thumbs up. They need that thumbs up. Also, do not get angry if they tell you, well, I can't really get that far because, you know, this is in the way or this is a concern or like movement, placement, hair, jewelry, all the other stuff. You know, they'll warn you about things and don't get too angry about that. But it's also important to keep that in mind. So listen to your piercer and the piercer will listen to you as well. Just have that, you know, like I said earlier, uh, that balanced relationship. Now, one of the biggest things that I pay attention to is how they change their gloves. I know not a lot of people think about this, but when I'm watching them and talking to them, I'm looking at Sorry about that, my battery died, so if the placement move, I'm very, very sorry about that. But anyway, as I was saying, it's good if they're showing you that they're taking out, you know, freshly clean jewelry and tools. Another thing that I look out for prep is basically, do they wash their hands and do they have a sink in the same room as them? If they don't have a sink in the same room as them, then... How they got into that room, they could have touched something or cross-contaminated on the way to you. So I definitely like seeing, you know, everything that they need in that room right there on the spot. So a sink, cabinets, you know, cotton balls or, well, probably not cotton balls, like Q-tips. <laughs> and um, everything for that, like a little slot for the autoclave jewelry to pop in, you know. Everything should be legit, a nice little bench. You know, I want them to be prepared and I want to know that I'm not gonna get any germs from them as well. Now, this part is very, very optional and nitpicky. For some people, this might be a lot to understand, but you don't have to do this. I prefer to be pierced by people that don't really use clamps or tools. I love it when people freehand piercings. Um, it just, it's so much better. I'm not gonna get too much into how clamps are bad because some people prefer clamps. It's kind of like a controversial thing in the piercing community between piercers. Um, you know, some people prefer the tools and the clamps to make it easier. You know, if it helps you do the job, then do it. You know, some people will say that. Some people prefer, pre prefer, prefer. Some people would want you to do freehand. Why can't I talk today? I'm salivating like literally so much. Now I'm gonna list a lot of red flags. The number one red flag that you should just run out of there is of course, and everyone knows this, if they have a piercing gun. I'm pretty sure everyone in 2018 knows not to get done <laughs> by a piercing gun. Did I just rhyme? I did. Um, <laughs> Claire's and Walmart. I, they use piercing guns. They are the most disgusting, unsanitary thing in the world. Maybe I'll make a video about the piercing gun if you guys want me to. It's insane that it's even legal. So the piercing gun is those are those state standards that you see. You do not want to go by state standards. Believe me. Trust me. Do not get done by a piercing gun. I keep on rhyming. God. Another red flag is if they drop... <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't speak at all, and I'm trying my hardest. If they drop the jewelry on the floor and then try to put it back on the tray or to pierce you with it or try to put it in your body, get the fuck out of the way. Like, cover that area and be like, fuck no, bitch, you're not putting that fucking shit on my ear. Eww. Like, no, 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 no. Not good. Not good at all. Huge red flag. Now, there's a lot of things that go on in the piercing community that some people might not notice. What happens in the back room, nobody knows. Um, but if the piercer smells of alcohol, weed, or anything suspicious, just stop the piercing right there. And this is kind of like an optional red flag. Like I said earlier, some people don't mind it when piercers are rude or anything like that. But 
if they're very inappropriate or rude or racist or sexist towards you, then that's a pretty big, big flag to me. If I'm gonna get my nipples pierced or maybe even something down there pierced and they make a joke that makes me extremely uncomfortable, I'm like, I'm ending that shit right fucking there. I don't give a fuck. I am ending that on the spot and I will always have someone with me in the room while I get one of those piercings as well. Always, always. Alex, like if I ever get anything done, you know, saucy wise, <laughs> I will always have them in the room and I will tell the piercer, I need to have this person in the room with me. And that's that. If they don't allow it, then, you know, really try to barter with them. Be like, no, I need this person. If they don't, and, and if they don't want it, then just back out. And if you do run into that situation, make sure you get out of that situation safely as possible. I cannot talk right now for a very serious moment, but seriously, if you feel uncomfortable, leave, that's the bottom line. And with all those red flags being out there, I'm sure there's plenty more out there, but those are kind of like the basic red flags that I have for you guys. Um, if you ever feel uncomfortable or questioning something, you can ask the piercer, um, or you can just back out. It is very, very easy just to be like, you know what, I'm not feeling good right now, I don't think I should get pierced, or just back out of the situation, you know, just remove yourself from the situation, depending on how bad it is. I don't know, I've, there's some really bad stories out there, and I just want you guys to be safe, but you can always, always stop the piercing whenever you want, even if they have the needle right at your ear, or whatever it is that you're about to get pierced. And even if the needle is like barely touching you, you can just stop the situation right there. You can totally do it. You can say, I'm having anxiety, I can't do this, or I'm feeling a little bit nervous and uncomfortable, or I just don't feel good right now, I'll come back another time, you know, you can you can stop it anytime at all. Something that I will note is that if you do stop the uh, piercing and they already opened up everything, they might uh, charge you for a setup fee, which probably should do. <laughs> um, you do owe the money and it does cost money to like set out, clean everything and the labor and the work that it came out to be just to like get everything set up for you. Um, so there might be a fee for that. Ooh, I think that is everything that I wanted to cover. I'm feeling pretty good about it, but yet every time I edit, there's always something I want to say or add. Or maybe a couple weeks later, I'm like, oh, I should have fucking added this. So if you have any questions at all or concerns about this subject, you can go ahead and comment down below. I will try my hardest to comment back. Um, and the very last thing I have to say that is very important that is not really related to this, um, but just always uh, tip your piercer, tattoo artist, um, any kind of artist out there, they work very hard, you know, you should be tipping them. Yes, that's a, that's a question I always get, always tip your piercer, they go through a lot, even if it's for jewelry, like a little change out, um, stuff like that. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier, if you want to just like test ride the piercer, you can just order some simple jewelry and have them put it in for you and see how they handle that, you know, they should be calm and collected and put the jewelry in fairly easy for you. They shouldn't be like shaking and like <laughs> making you uncomfortable and like moving the tools. Some pieces of jewelry are kind of painful to put in, so keep that in mind, but that's basically a general thing. I did... <sighs> so much talking. I've been trying to like get all this information in as easy as possible and I hope this video is good. Oh, God, every time I make like a piercing video, I'm so like frustrated with myself whenever I do these. I don't know why, because like I feel like I need to do better and better and better and better and I'm never happy with it, but I'm feeling okay about this one. I did a 24 hour stream lately, it's been crazy. Okay, I just need to make a video soon and talk to you guys, because I'm just trying to like talk to you and talk to you when I have this topic video. So I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, have an amazing day and journey and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>